rough, great week. Rough, great week. But still yet, through it all, God still yet is going to get the glory. Amen. Amen. It is written and it has been said many times in all things. Give what? Give thanks. Give thanks. Thank God. Amen. We want to speak with you briefly this morning from the book of Colossians, the third chapter. Amen. Colossians, the third chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. For the New King James Version, Colossians, the third chapter. We get it with the 15 verse. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and abolishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Amen. This morning, I am thankful and blessed. Amen. I am thankful and blessed. Paul writes also, let Christ's peace control you. God has called you into this peace by bringing you into one body. Be thankful. Amen. Let Christ's word with all his wisdom and riches live in you. Use psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms to teach and instruct yourself about God's kindness. Sing to God in your hearts. Everything you say or do to be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Give me thanks to God, the Father through Him. All that you do, all that you were made to do, all that you are allowed to do, you either can complain or give praise. Amen. If you spend your time complaining about what you don't have, all you're doing is making yourself more miserable. Amen. Subject this morning, we were going to throw in something, uh, subtitle, learn to use what you got. Learn to use what you got. Many of us in here have so much junk. We haven't even used it. So the day we purchase it, Amen. and the day we play with it, Amen. We have so much that God has given us, but yet our eyes are big, and we keep looking for more. First of all, count the goodness, the blessings that you already have. If you were allowed to have one thing in life, what would it be? What would it be? It would be a hard question because our intellect tells us that the more we get, the more we want. Point number one, quit complaining and start appreciating it. Quit complaining and start appreciating it. I learned most of all how to appreciate one another. When was the last time you told someone you loved them without any questions. I love you. How many times have you spoken a good word into someone's ear without tearing them down? It's easy to find faults. You don't have to look hard for faults. But where do you find the goodness? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you get a brand new car, you, you joyfully talk about your brand new car. But when you
you see the first payment due, your joy becomes a complaint. You should be thrilled that you got a bill to pay because you wanted what you got. How many times have you have said these words after you got something that you thought you needed and wanted and found out it wasn't what you wanted? Learn to use what you have. Learn to use what you have. It does not take much to make a child happy, to make someone else happy. Now, if you have what we call gold diggers, then no matter what you get, it's never going to be enough. You have to understand, you have to learn to use what you have. We use this illustration this morning. We all in here have these basic ingredients. And only the bakers in here probably can tell you what it is when I give the ingredients. <laughs> Flour, a quart of oil, tablespoon of salt, and a quarter cup of milk. What will it make? Bread. Bread. You might want to throw a pinch of baking soda. And the last ingredient, love. You have bread. Y'all didn't know how to make bread <laughs> Those simple things. I learned as a child growing up. Break your bread, and it goes further. Last longer. Because when you make your own bread, you can make your own biscuits. As big as you want. Amen. There were many times I laughed about it because before I went to school, I had an ingredient, a breakfast that was fit for king. A sausage panel, a biscuit, and molasses. I thought that was the greatest meal you could ever have. Then when I got to school and I saw they had other kind of stuff, I kind of wanted what they had. I forgot how happy I was with what I had. Many of you here have this problem. Your eyes are too big. Great stuff. Amen. Learn to use what you have. When you a soldier, is learn in your spirit how to adapt and overcome. In other words, whatever situation it puts you in, you need to adapt to it and overcome. If you allow the society burdens to tear you down and you adapt to their ways, you're not going to progress. Learn to use what you have. Learn how to sing yourself happy. Pray yourself happy. Paul tells the Colossians, he said, use these things, the songs, the hymns, to encourage one another. Number three, the Christian life is not a matter of trying, but relying. Relying. You can try as hard as you may, but if you don't put the Holy Spirit in it, you're wasting your time. You were made to praise God. You were made to give Him glory. Your glory should reflect in your life the life you live. The life you live. For your children, you are supposed to be an example of godliness. For your husband or wife, you're supposed to be an example of godliness. In the community, you're supposed to be an example of godliness and holiness. Not because you feel good, but because you give God glory. People know you by what you do, not what you say. What do we do in the body does concern God. What you do with the body God gave you does concern God. Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. In other words, you need to have a shining example. 
And Jesus gives that example. By that, everything we say and do reflects on God's that we claim that we know and love. How many times you've heard people say, I love the Lord. And out of the next five minutes, out of the same mouth, you come cursing them. And you looking at them like, what did you just say? How is it that Christians can come to church on Sunday and lose their Christianity on Monday? How is it that we can be holy for two hours on Sunday and for the rest of the 22 hours, nobody wants to be around you? We must try not only to not to hurt anyone intentional, but a lot of times we fall short. You can, in today's society, it is easy to know it does not take much to irritate people. People today are just mad, angry, for particularly no reason. We are looking at a time where we are seeing more people riding down the highway get it shot for no particular reason. We are looking at a time now where we have all the security. We've got ring. We've got doorbell cameras. We've got house cameras, ADT, CPI, and all those good things. And yet, people still will steal your packages of your dough. We're in a time frame now where it used to be that people would only come out at night and rob you. <laughs> now they rob you in broad daylight. Amen. Why? Because they have lost the entity. It is better to take what belongs to someone else than to earn from themselves. We are in a time frame that Paul says tells us you need to watch these things and be aware of them. And when someone is victimized, don't laugh at them because it could be you next. Amen. Someday our speech is not what we call good. How many of you have a good day? Oh, that's your saying. What consists of a good day, preacher? A good day consists nobody's bothering me. I don't have to go to work. And I do what I want to do. That's a good day. That's a bad day. You are a soft on the earth. You are light of the world. Your presence is supposed to irritate people. They're supposed to know how to turn away from ungodly to godly. Bad things escape before we think. Many times, instead of telling someone glory, praise God, we'll say heartbeat, leave me alone. Some put other adjectives to it. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's not from God. We have to remember those who are elected of God. We are holy and loved. Look at someone say, you're holy. You love the God, which means you are special. We must lay aside our feelings and be strong for those that are hurting. While in this world, there is much corruption in our hearts. Quarrels will sometimes arise. But it is our duty to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. We have to think back so many times how many times we've said something, hurt someone without even acknowledging it. Back in the day, many of you like I would have said things without giving a second thought. But thanks be to God, there's a change in our lives. Looking back over our lives, we can't help but say, I'm thankful. I'm not who I used to be. Amen. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not yet who I'm supposed to be. But I'm working on perfection. The gospel is the word of Christ. Many have the word, but it dwells in them poorly. I remember working at Black and Decker one time. And I told someone, there's a difference, praise God, when you don't have to work. Amen. Some of you have not acquired that position yet. But there's a time in your life when you go through something, you retire, you don't have to work. And you go find your job. And you're there because you want to be there. There's a difference 
be free, be in there because you want to be there, and be in there because you got to be there. There is a difference in that. And, and, and I was, it was my first civilian job that I had. And I was so thrilled. I had never worked with civilians in such a low state before. I had them on post, but they were all DOD and we different world on post. But civilians, I had to say to myself when I had my first day, I said, man, they're crazy. They're loose. They don't have no discipline. I don't understand how they operate. And I thought about that. I said, well, doesn't matter. I'm going to do who I am. And I got so good at it, and I prayed that I was glad to go to work. It was thrilling to me. They had lunch at 12 o'clock. I liked that. That's the easiest way when you have MREs sometimes. Well, that was a great thing to me. It meant hot meal. And uh, I, I was so fascinated with it. And, and every now and then, the boss would come out and he would raise a flag. You know, and I would come running and they would pass out money. I said, oh man, this is a great job. And I thought about that. And I said, well, no matter. I decided I would go to Krispy Kreme early in the morning because I had a line. And I liked the people that I worked with. I said, I'm going to get myself some donuts. I like Krispy Kreme donuts. And I got those Krispy Kreme donuts. I took them away. And I passed them out on the line. And oh, man, they were happy. They were so thrilled with it. And I got to one lady, and she had a donut in his hand, and a donut in his hand. And she was eating and just thanking. And she says to me, praise God, she said, next day, won't you get some chocolate ones? <laughs> I'm looking at her. Praise God. Aren't you happy? You didn't have anything before. And this is the same way with us with God. God gives us so many things. Each one of you in here, he has blessed over and over, even when you didn't deserve it. He poured out his blessings on you, anointed you. But yet we found a reason to complain. First of all, we need three things. Learn how to sing, how to pray, and have a prayer. Mm -hmm. Scripture, in other words. We must know that all that we do, we must do it for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Things to be thankful for. Let me out this morning. Things to be thankful for. Number one, you're alive. Mm -hmm. In this time frame, we've had two funerals in one month to another. The first time they were happening in the church. But you are thankful you weren't one of them. Amen. You didn't go to sleep hungry last night. Amen. You didn't have to sleep outside. You had a choice of what clothes to wear this morning. Praise God. Ain't that something? You were not hiding for someone for fear of your life. You know someone loves you. We told you this morning, nobody said we love you. We did. You have access to clean drinking water. You have access to medical care. You have access to the internet. Now, if you're not technology solid, you don't know what that is. <laughs> praise God. Some of you don't know the difference between internet and Wi Fi, but <laughs> praise God. Amen. You can read. You should know Jesus died for your sins. You have home and not in the hospital. You can complain about what you don't have. You got another chance to get it right. These are things to be happy for. What are we saying to you? Psalms 104. It says something. Enter the gates with songs of thanksgiving. Come into his court out with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Don't wait till you get inside the church to make for someone to make you happy. You should have woke up this morning and as you came to church, on your way to church, you should have been thanking God. Wow. Just for another day. When you come to church and praise and testimonies are given, it should be your duty to tell somebody, I got a testimony. Not about what someone told me, but what God has done for me. How many times you hear people who have a testimony but they're back in 1929? <laughs> What have God done for you lately? Mm -hmm. He woke you up. Yeah. First of all, look at this. Colossians says, 1 and 12, you would also thank the Father who has made you able to share the light, which is what God's people inherit. 
Because Jesus died for your Calvary cross, that's a chance for you to tell somebody, I have eternal life. I realize I'm going through some things down here. Things are not always good down here, but I know without a shout in my mind this morning that I've got a house not made by hands. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 6 and say, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Whatever happens, give thanks. Because it's God's will in Christ Jesus, amen, that you do this. Yes, sometimes we got a crummy job. Yes, we're put in a situation that we're not fond of. But you have to make the best of that situation. And in making the best of that situation, the more that you give God praise, the more God will raise you up. You got to understand this. Old man had a mule and he was tired of it. He dug a deep hole. He said, I'm tired of that mule. He threw that old mule in that hole. That old mule looked up and he said to himself, he tried to kill me. <laughs> man began to shove snow, a rock and dirt on that mule. But that mule was not going down easy. The more he shoved, the more he began to stomp. And pretty soon, he stomped his way to the top of the hill again. You got to learn to let the devil know you don't have no hold on me. You sent me yesterday. But guess what? I, I've got a new attitude now. I know what I didn't know yesterday. And yesterday I couldn't think I would make it. But I know without a shadow of doubt this morning, I can make it. I can make it because you gave me eternal life. Despite the circumstances you're going through, you are blessed. May not feel like you think you should feel, but you can feel. Despite what people say, you know who you belong to. In spite of all that's going on, you should have a song in your heart, a testimony on your lips. You should be able to tell somebody what God has done for you. I'm thankful this morning to be in the number. I'm thankful this morning because God has allowed me another opportunity. Amen. I love what I'm doing this morning because God has enabled me to. Somebody ought to know this. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And highly faith. Amen. Not because I think I'm better than anybody else, but because of what he's done for me. Amen. I'm thankful Amen. and blessed. Amen. This should be your cue this morning. Amen. I'm thankful Amen. and blessed. Yes. How are you doing? Thank I'm doing all right. Amen. I'm blessed. Amen. That can turn that situation around. Do not allow the devil to take your joy. Amen. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. This is an opportunity for those at home that are watching. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity where you can say, come into my heart. He's already paid the price for you. In doing so, I love this. He said, come just as you are. I would accept you just as you are. But I'm so glad that when you come into his presence, you won't leave like you used to. Amen. Amen. So those that are watching by me, pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me if I have sinned and fell short of your glory. But I believe that your son Jesus died. That you have given me now through him eternal life. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this blessing. Amen. Amen. And then go find yourself a church. Join to it. Be a part of it. Work in the work, in the middle. I love this thing because it's unique. I put it on each obituary because I know it's true. And it says, let those in work because they are now rested from their labor. But they have a key point down at the bottom that says, and their works shall follow. Their works shall follow. So join the church and let your works speak for you. Amen? Amen. Let your works speak for you. May God bless you. And may have a smile for you. Thank you.